Hey, it's Chris here from Bow River Trout Fitters, and today we're gonna to be tying a midge pattern. I guess we'll call this the Bow River Buzzer, why not? So we're gonna start with a caddis hook, although clink hammer style works really well. We've got a bead on here, and we're actually gonna go with a larger bead than you would normally use for this size of hook. Now we're gonna put a little bit of wire on here, tying it in. I'm using 0.01 lead wire, pretty thin, and we're not wrapping the whole body. We're just gonna wrap a few millimeters behind the bead. We want the whole hook section of the body to be as thin as possible. Lock that in place and wrap your thread down to well past the bend of that hook there. Now we're gonna tie in a red hollow tinsel, very thin. Uh, we're also gonna tie in a section of copper wire. Tie them together just with a few wraps. You don't wanna build up a lot of bulk here at the bottom. So we're gonna be really careful with that and we're gonna secure them against the body. I often use a red rubber floss, but I find that it gives you more of a softer red body. I'm trying the tinsel here to get a bit of flash. And I find as I'm wrapping here in concentric wraps, that it actually gives me a flatter, thinner body. That's what we want, a very, very skinny worm-like body. We're gonna tie that up, lock it in place with some thread. Then we're gonna wrap our copper wire to secure that in place. And again, I'm using a very thin, small copper wire. We're gonna lock all that in and clip that off. Now we're gonna tie in medium silver hollow tinsel, pearl work as well. Just a little bit of flash to catch the fish's attention. We're gonna tie that and make sure it's as central as you can get on top of the nymph as possible. Uh, just right above where our red body stops. Now we're gonna tie in some hurl, but I'm gonna use the hurl that's right next to the eye of the peacock because the fibers are longer. And when we tie this and we really want a chunky body, I'm gonna use two fibers and I'm gonna twist them together. Uh, this is just gonna give them a little bit more strength because we're not gonna have a rib or anything holding it in place. We're gonna palmer those on, nice chunky body there, lock that down. Now we're gonna use just a natural mallard breast feather and just the tip of this here because this is gonna represent the gills of the midge. And uh, I like to just do one loose wrap and when I do that I can then keep adjusting with my fingers and then just pull gently till I get the right distance that I want. So try to follow the video here. You want proportions not sticking off the head too far but you still want it to be prominent. So now I'm going to tie those down. I'm going to clip off the back of that mallard feather. There we go. We're almost on the fly. Now it's just time to pull over that pearl uh, mylar just as that kind of shell back and that little bit of flash. Tie that down as well. I always like to do a couple wraps when I do tinsel and then fold it back on itself and lock that down, as you can see right here, with another couple wraps. I just find that that helps it secure a little bit uh, tighter. Cut that off. We're gonna glue that in place, whip finish the fly, and that is basically it. Now this is basically a coronamid pattern. You could absolutely use it in lakes where you would classically find a lot of coronamid fishing, but the fact is the Bow River and many other tailwaters and freestone streams have lots of midges in them, especially around winter time, but this is the kind of bug that you'll find all year round. And so I actually find this to be an absolutely effective nymph in our moving waters and rivers that we have here. We like to tie this size 16, size 14, size 18 in that range. It's got some weight to get it down. You can see a bunch of different patterns here. Go big and go small. Thanks so much for joining us. Trout this pattern. And remember, you can get all the materials at bowrivertroutfitters.com.